Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Tony Talks in the building. I'm going to let everybody fall in. Again, we on Dash Radio. We also on YouTube. Please, please share this. Let's get the discussion. Grab your drinks because we're going to have a discussion about this cheating scandal. You know we're talking about this cheating scandal. And it's been crazy. It's been crazy all week. We've been talking about it. We've been seeing all the repercussions. I've been telling y'all that white folks got all the wealth. Y'all been like, nah, that ain't true. Nah, I'm not saying that. Y'all have said that. But like, let's let let's let's kind of break it out. Again, Tone Talks, Dash Radio. I'm gonna give y'all a chance to call in, give your opinions on everything. But for the moment, for the moment, let's just let's just take a a, a, a breath for a second. Been a big week. You know, this scandal breaks that, that these white folks been out here bribing their way into school. USC, Yale, Wake Forest, Stanford. They ain't trying to leave nothing on the plate for us. Come on. So look, please go to go to YouTube. Join the discussion. We're going to be in the box on YouTube and having this discussion over the next hour. Share this on your Facebook, on your Twitters, because people have been looking for the discussion to be had. And... Please donate. Use the super chat. Support the channel. That's how we do this. Hashtag ADOS. You're going to have an ADOS conference this October on the 4th and 5th in Louisville. Get your tickets. The overflow is available now. We done sold out the main area. Thousand seats. We going up in there. We, we coming for reparations. I don't know if y'all get it yet. You know, all the candidates is talking about it. ADOS that made that happen. Shout out to y'all. Celebrate that. Y'all, y'all, y'all did this. So let's talk about what we talking about today title of the show is the 10 takeaways from the college cheating scandal you know i want to break it into 10 different sections so i got to get through it and what i want to do is 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 really really kind of slow down before i get to the 10 takeaways from the college cheating scandal and kind of explain how we got here when we look at this scandal it is the it is the expression of wealth inequality so basically you had uh white parents bribing SAT officials to cheat. They had single proctors. You taking a test with somebody, a proctor by yourself, that somebody, your, your parents done paid 25,000 for you to take this test. Understand that, that they had bribing of college coaches. So the coaches can make it look like you played uh, water polo or, or, or fencing or, or uh, row because the pathway into USC is that much easier if you come through athletics. And then if, if it all, you know, what we gonna do is we gonna frame it as donations. This is philanthropic redlining. I just covered this in Louisville. I just covered this in Louisville. So the last part of it was the masking of the bribes as tax deductible. You know, so, so you had coaches taking a million dollars, $2 million, the craziness of this thing. The thing that I want y'all to understand as we get into this is the state of black wealth and what this means for black access and why it says that reparations is necessary, not tomorrow, now. Not tomorrow, now, if your kids are gonna have any chance in this America. Look here, the 10 takeaways from college cheating scandal, I wanna go through the 10, then we are gonna go right back up to the top and dig in. Number one, wealth inequality and what it means in terms of the admission process. Number two, criminal networks. Are these criminal networks like RICO? You know, we gonna dig into how this should be treated. Number three, white women as victims versus white families as actors. Number four, why do white women go to college these days? You know, you had the daughter say, um, the daughter of Aunt Becky from Full House, she said that she don't wanna go to, that she didn't never wanna go to college anyway or something of the sort. Let's talk about it a little bit, why they go to college. Um, number, number five, Will the punishment match the crime? They done already said that Aunt Becky can go out of the country to film her the rest of her show or whatever she got going on. We ain't got no mug shots yet. They already saying that that the children the children wasn't involved. Come on, you taking fake photos and you ain't involved. You twenty. They got juvenile hall. They already talking about the parents. Maybe we're just you know they won't see in the inside of a jail. Let's talk about it. That the the next one number six. Will the children get to keep their degrees? When you do dope sales and the fruit comes off that dope sale, we snatching all of it. 
Let's talk about not just whether you in the admission process or in the school. What if you finish? This is, cause this is not about 40 families. This is about a nation that needs to reconcile itself. Number seven, the government fund, uh, uh, found out about this on accident. They was investigating something else and the dude said, I, I, I got the truth. If y'all give me a, a, a deal and then laid out that America been cheating, cheating black folks in particular. Why the government didn't have an investigation going on about this before that? Why did it take a, a, a white man to say, I'm finna tell the truth to get off the hook from cheating and something else. He was doing some kind of pump and dump with stocks and he needed this so he could get out of, out of that. But if not for that, they still just be doing this. Understand that they called this the side door, the guy that, that, that orchestrated this. Let me explain. There's the front door. That's what we come through. We come through the front door in the worst way. You know, we come through with all our paperwork in line and uh, we, done, we done went to every program and we done the front door, the normal way that you're supposed to come in. Then there's the back door. That's where Jared Kushner came in, where you just give $3 million, put your name on the building and y'all get me in this school. Y'all get me through too. Look, then he said he came up with the side door. What I'm looking at is maybe the side door it's for the 9.9. We'll talk about that in a second. So you got the point one that can come through the back door. You can give three, four, five million, whop, one whop. But the side door is if you can give 300,000 and we just, you know, we still want them guarantees. So we mad at the side door, but we're not gonna deal with the back door. Let's talk about it. We here, Dash Radio, Dash Talk X, share the video. This is a, this is a sad day. It's not just a, you know, it, it is a sad day in the sense of, we all knew it, the Tone Talks people. You know, we all knew the ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery knew it. But somehow the rest of people, including black folks at large, didn't know this was going on and it's a shock. It's a shock that it's not about white male patriarchy, it's about white women and white families and white children and white communities that want it all. So let's keep going. Number eight. This is not a people of color problem. We're gonna talk about the one family that's come out so far that's Dominican. They Dominican. She got into Georgetown, but they Dominican. We bought all people of color though. The, the father made $8 million. Understand again, there might be less than a few, uh, few hundred black families anywhere near making that kind. I don't even know if it's a few hundred. It's so small, it don't even count. This man made $8 million and he's Dominican. And, I, this questions the whole idea. No, it's black and white and everybody trying to get into whiteness and leave us behind after we built the country. Let's talk about this is why reparations is the only answer. You can sit around and, and, and talk about UBI and uh, uh, Medicare for all. You can talk about all that if you want to. Kids be driving Uber, doing Grubhub. Let's talk last point. Well, actually the last two points. Number nine, does this, does this just apply to admission or is this all of white life? And number 10, what will wealth calcification do to an America built on this system? We gonna hyper exaggerate it. We gonna make sure that they got everything, not just almost everything. Can your kids get into Stanford anymore? If you don't have no wealth, we in the box. We moving towards a thousand people. Please use the chat. Cause that's where the dialogue happens. Everybody's talking. We here to not only demand our due, but to get a discussion going on about why this is a problem. We need to demand these white women go to jail. They're a scourge on the community. I'm gonna talk about it. You know, this is not like a one time we just didn't know. And we gave an extra $600 and we just thought we were gonna get extra time and it just was wrong. No, this is a, 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 a see, this is a planned thing. See when it's planned like this, when you sit down and organize your plan and say what I'm gonna do, step one, step two, and it's over several years, that's the worst kind of criminal. That's the kind of criminal that you try to avoid. Let me say before I get into point one, just so you can have this on your head. I don't wanna hear nobody tell me that these are first time offenders. See that, that status is built for somebody who literally just did something for the first time. And that was just the one day that they did it. Let me explain. If you a mob boss, if you a drug kingpin, and you ain't never been caught, you ain't got no crimes on you, but you've been doing all kinds of stuff, violence and drug sales and everything else, 
when they catch you, they don't treat you like no first time offender. They treat you like a drug kingpin because that you've been in a business of doing stuff for a long time. What we see now is that people don't understand the reality of how they need to approach things. And so now, so, so look, this is the, this is the thing that I want to do. I want, I want to, I want to have this discussion. I want to make sure that we get into it, but when we get into it, we got to be honest with ourselves. What are white people doing that we can't do? Why do we need them to stop? I want y'all to call in 323-230-4610 to make the discussion happen. But in this America, if we don't get no answers, it's going to be a problem for us. Because right now what's happening is they done shut us out of wealth. And they don't even care that they have. So let's get right into to, to number one. Number one is wealth inequality means the, 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 the college admission process has a back door and a side door. What does that mean if we don't have wealth? So that, so, so when we, when we look at America, when we look at, at wealth inequality, America is, is moving in a place where black people are locked out and they don't have a chance. And so when I say that you look at black America, we have 2.6% of the wealth, but almost 2% of that 2.6 is in the top 10% of our homes on all old people, retirees, boomers, bottom half of the race is worth less than a dollar. We don't have wealth. And so now what's happening is that, that as a result, we need government to step in and not allow this kind of thing to happen. And, 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 that, and that's not happening right now. What's happening instead is that we're being locked out and treated, treated as though, as though we not here, as though we not part of America. I want to change the discussion and make sure that, that, that we understand the consequence of of if we don't get reparations, if we don't get a massive change, if we don't address this kind of inequality, what's going to happen is black folks ain't going to have nothing. I mean, they ain't going to have no access to opportunity, to the future, to nothing. Let me take the first caller of the night. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Tone is Otis. What's up? I'm calling what? from Yorktown, Virginia. What's up, Otis? Let's talk about wealth inequality for a second. Tell me your thoughts on everything. Oh, that, well, I tell you, I can applaud the three years worth of work that y'all are doing. It's blowing up. It's all on the national stage. I see C-SPAN covering inequality, talking about the issues that you brought up with the vet, talking about this college thing. They've acknowledged that it's bigger than just the 750 people. They're talking about the fact that these people have no morality, and this system has been going on nationally. They had a sister on. I tried to share some of it with you and Yvette earlier. They, they've got a sister talking about how this is a problem across the nation. Also, in public colleges, they're talking about legacy admissions probably should be tailored differently. They had a girl on a Heritage Come Foundation on. talking about how uh, they're, they're trying to use this push to privatize more loans and stuff to students. And they had a sister on there that was pushing back, saying, no, this has nothing to do with privatization. It has to do with setting standards. It has to do with stopping this diversity stuff and going back to the original meaning of affirmative action, doing it for black people, not being concerned with white people being offended because the rules are not set so that they can take advantage of people. I mean, it's wide open. I applaud the work y'all have been doing for three years. Now, if you got a specific answer... A question. I'll try to hit that too, but I just no. That's all I need is that's all I need is blowing up, brother. Oh, we oh oh, we gonna get this reparations though. You know, thanks. I want to say this on air. We're also trying to push to the point, and I know you and Yvette are polishing up your talking points. We're trying to push to the point that we're pushing out these Joy Reads. I try to share with you. You got uh, ADUSO family that is calling in and talking to uh, Bass and talking to Sheila Jackson Lee telling them they can't be doing H.R. 40 without us in the room, telling them that they're sick and tired of seeing DACA when we got hookworms. These people are doing the work, man. I applaud what y'all are doing. And as far as the naysayers and the Bruce Dixons that are trying to say they all doing white supremacy talking points, I've been on the airwaves. I'm trying to push just me. But I've called everybody from Tom Hartman to Carl Nelson and told them, you need to get it straight and stop telling lies about ADOS. 
Because for on. one thing, I didn't know you had branched out and started teaching economics over at Duke. That's how no, Ryan got teach these people, Duke. man. They ain't even doing the basic research. I mean, I applaud you, brother. Keep on stepping. Thank you, you for coming. calling, O. We got your back. I get your emails. So look, so look, Otis came with that fire today. We end, we end the discussion. Wealth inequality is crazy. Jared Kushner, the the, the son-in-law of, of, of Trump, he got into Harvard through a two and a half million dollar donation to Harvard. He didn't have the grades. That's the Guardian did the article. And what they also showed was that essentially uh, he had donated the maximum to his senator for since he was 11. So, so his parents on his behalf. So when it came time to get into Harvard, his senator wrote the letter of recommendation. All this is craziness. You think your kid going to Harvard too? Or when they get there, look, what wealth inequality is doing is this. I just went to UCLA like just to speak or something, uh, maybe a, a week and a half ago. They got them scooters on there. You need $8 an hour to get one. You got to be able to send your kid to college with about $2,000 in pocket change. That's 24 a year. We know the middle black family is worth $1,700 without depreciating. But we also know only 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 five percent of black families are worth are worth more than three hundred uh, three hundred fifty thousand or something. We know only a few hundred thousand black families are worth more than uh, a million dollars. So how many black families have twenty four thousand dollars in loose change to get to their kids? So what does that mean in terms of what, whether you guys have college bound kids? I'm not talking about no scholarship right now. I'm talking real money. We're not playing with that. We're talking the real. Do you have a fund with like sixty thousand? for one kid and then 60 for the next kid, because this is just like lo like basic money to be in that elite class of Stanford, UCLA, and everything else. That's the front door, though. And I don't think we ready. Let me take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Let me take another one. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, my name is D. I'm calling from Georgia. D. So look. They use criminal networks when you can't really get somebody. I mean, here we got the person on, on, on audio, but they use RICO when you're trying to get a drug kingpin and a web of people. And what, what I'm seeing is like, we don't really want to characterize these women as long standing criminals, these mothers and these white families. We don't, we really don't even want to deal with these, with these daughters as criminals, co-conspirators. And you're a co-conspirator. And so I come to you and ask the question, why we don't want to see these white women as criminals? I think it's hard for people to see mothers. Um, I just can speak for myself. I'm a teacher. Um, and I want to speak for something else about colleges. Okay. But I think that it's just hard for us to see um, people that, um, especially the actresses, we don't really see the other people necessarily involved. All you're seeing are the actresses that um, – you might know if you watch Hallmark, you watch Desperate Housewives, and only thing that you know of these people is something um, is wholesome. Mm. So now you're seeing the background of these people, and you realize, wow, I don't really know these people at all. It was just an image. So sometimes it's hard for people to separate the two. Maybe I'm wrong, um, especially the woman who was um, Aunt Becky on Full House and Hallmark, if you watch the movies. Christmas movies and things. She's been a staple in some in some of our homes for almost twenty years. Um, if going back to when I was a little girl. Let me jump in here. So wait, 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 wait. Let me jump in here. So we love white people. Let's let's talk about no, it. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, I'm but saying you like might not be saying people. that. You might not be saying that. But I'm saying to you. Let me let me say. Mm -hmm. One of the things that mm -hmm. we're seeing is black folks have infused our homes with a lot of like white life. When I say that, I mean there was a time in the seventies. Where on what black TV was what Sanford and Son. I'm not dealing with whether you <laughs> like that show or not, and whether it represented mm -hmm. black upliftment and all that. It was Sanford and Son. Our good times. This yeah. generation grew up like with Seinfeld and and, and Full House. So now what's ending up happening is we see them as wholesome and then see ourselves as criminal when we do the when they doing more worse stuff than us. I'm just throwing that out that's, there, Carly. I mean, that, that is true. But that's that's why um, your show, um, I've, been, uh, uh, I've been following you a long time. You have stated, and Yvette Cornell, that we need to change what we see on TV. People have been stating um, that a long time about BET. Um, you know, people didn't like it, but it's true. We have to show the images that we want to see. I 
me personally as a teacher, I don't like what I see on TV now. Mm. I I don't like that I am not represented the way that I should be on TV. And if you try Come to on. say something, people shut you down. Come on. And so when you, you know, Hallmark has finally, um, this year finally has had minorities that fall in love. It took um, protests. It's taken almost, what, 10 years for you to finally see a black couple on Hallmark. That shouldn't have never been. I mean, but but, they, but then people. also we should have some black media. You know, you got yes. Look, look let's yes. get let, let's yes. you a teacher. Let's get back to yes, one I part. They, they, yes. You know, you 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 set up your curriculum. You do the work to make yes. sure that these school these students get the right yes. lessons. You got these yes. little white kids and white families lying about the accolades. You got them lying. Look, yes. they 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 sitting up and they saying that she was a a, a four star. Uh, uh, water polo player, and this yeah. on the on the on the on the let on the l little charity team, and she ain't did none of it. She up there doing vlogging. Yes. How does that yes, make you that feel as a true. teacher? But then I have a question for you, Tone. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also an HBCU graduate. Okay. Um, we look. I'm about the same age as you. Um, my mother made sure, and I'm just gonna be honest that. I had a college that I could go to, and I, I'm, I'm very grateful now. Um, for me, more than ever now, we have to talk about saving our HBCUs. Agreed. Because if we're getting shut out of all these things in America, what we thought America should be, if we don't watch it, thank God for our HBCUs that we have somewhere to go. Now, I can't, if nothing else, I have that, and I'm very grateful for that. And I, I am more now, and I, I'm making a mission for myself. If I don't do anything else, I'm going to support my HBCUs because if I have children of my own, I got to make sure they have somewhere to go in America. I don't know what it's going to look like in 20 years, but I want to make sure they have a college to go to because this has Did been you, going on for years. You said you got years. a question for me. What's the question? So I can answer. My question is that, if nothing else, we better, like I, I've seen you, I've seen Yvette Cornell, that we have to make our mission to make sure that we have these HBCUs. We have to have them. So it's more of a if statement. Else, right. We have somewhere our students can go. All right, all right. Let me, let me take the next caller. Thank you so much. That was powerful. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, look, powerful call. But we got to start also dealing with, like, They've indoctrinated us with such a value for them, for them, meaning black folks indoctrinated with a value for white folks. And we got these white women. I saw an article where the, where the Aunt Becky and the daughters, my kids are going to leave USC because they'll be bullied. Wait, they're not leaving USC because they're about to be kicked out because they never should have been admitted. They leaving because they're going to possibly be bullied from all the media coverage. Nobody bullied you yet. How did they get to play victim? Let's take the next caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? You got to turn the background on. Hi. Hello? Yeah, tell me what I'm, I'm, I'm asking about this whole idea. They, they about to try to play victim, or they already started it, these white women. Because in, in, in many ways, what people don't understand, let's go all the way back. When you read books, uh, there's, a, there's a book that Yvette is actually doing for her book club. And in it, what it, what it shows is that We've mischaracterized the whole thing about white male patriarchy and everything else. It's not about whether white women make less than white men if they're in a married couple, because then they put that earning together. It's not even about what a white woman earns if she's going to inherit money from her granddaddy. So in a sense, what we don't understand now looking back in history is that in Virginia during slavery, what we don't remember, just like Martha Washington, Martha Washington, who George Washington married, it ended up being almost what they called a matriarchy, a widow, widow archy, because the men would die young and then the women would inherit the slaves. So you had a whole system where Virginia was full of a matriarchal control of wealth. But we then created a world where white women don't have money and feminism, but black men don't have money and black families don't have money. See, what I think we've done wrong is we've never talked about this whole wealth inequality in the context of what it mean, what it actually is, which is about families, not white males, because white males live in white families and they come from white women and they marry white women and white women take that money and go spend it and then cheat on, on, on all kind of systems like we just saw right now. This ain't just about school. Give me your take on it, caller. Whoo, thank you. <laughs> they forget about who Margaret Sanger is. 
And Hillary Clinton comes from the Margaret Sanger camp along with KKK Kamala. <laughs> These people need – this war is, that's been going on against us in this country for 400 years. We got jumped into this against our will. That's our enslavement. So we in this game. Come on. We in it. And everybody else that comes in here new, they get all the fruit of this, and we still on the bottom. Well, we ain't having it no more. And what they're afraid of now is that we are unified as a tribe, and we know what we want, and we know who our enemies are, and they can't change our minds, and we ain't backing down. And let me tell you something. There was no white woman that stuffed in between me and the ass whipping I get since I was 14 years old. I've been abandoned in this country. Mm. So don't talk to me about any good white person. The best one I met mm. ain't no damn good. Come on. And, Come and, on. And, and look at who teaches. Who does the teaching in this country? It's the white women. Male cobra, female cobra. Take your pick. Man. Is How there, you going to think one is better than the other? Is there anything particularly you wanted to say on this topic? Oh, yeah. If they don't throw all them hoes in jail, it's time for the revolt to hit the streets. Let's talk about this in context. You had black, you had black mothers essentially from, from voting to just wanting to help their, their, their kid go to prison. You had teachers in Atlanta go to prison for seven years and 13 months of, uh, 13 years of probation to follow federal pro for, for, for basically that scandal about teaching. You had the voter fraud. I don't know if y'all know about the case where the woman got out of prison in 2012. She was on probation and then went and voted and didn't know she was, it was illegal. She was on probation. She got five years. I believe she got five years. How this woman ain't going to do at least five for this level of, 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 of cheating. I believe you're it's right. That, white supremacy. No, it, it, well, it, well, it's called that. And it's called also, we ain't been on watch. The CBC really ain't talked about the cheating scandal enough. Any last thing oh, you want to say to the okay. audience? Whoa, whoa. The, the CBC is not part of us. They, see, those people that look like us and supposed to have been representing us for 30 years, they have been in lockstep with those people to do this to us. They've been a shield and a guide, and, and they, they can't do it no more. They can't tell us who our enemies are. We can smell you. We can smell you. We're standing in the feces here in Loudoun County. So we we real familiar with the shit. Come on, come on. Man, look. look okay, look, look. And, and we can't have it. You're not going to choke my child and my grandchild to death on this. I am not going to die before this is made right. Man, look, I got to I gotta get to a bunch of other callers, caller. We go dominance over us. I got to get to some more callers. You done give me the fire. You done let everybody know. Join the chat, please, on YouTube, because everybody's saying you was, on, you was lit Thank tonight. Thank you. I will see y'all in October. Thank you. See you then, too. So, look. So, look. He was, he was on fire. And so what we have is a whole system where white women get affirmative action probably more than black men, actually. Actually, they do more than black men, not probably. And while, while they actually are just part of white family and they never should have been included in affirmative action. When you look at these calls, who's on the phone? It's the mother. When you look at the recipient, who's the recipient? This daughter. And she not, a, she, the schools and the children will not be charged. When they go after these, these athletes, these 19 and 18 and 17 year old black males that are six foot seven, they treat them like adults and give them adult attributes like Cam Newton. You should have known. But somehow with these kids, with these, with these, with these white girls, they kids all of a sudden. They children. They children. Little children that didn't know no better. Let's take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Brian in New Orleans. What up, Brian? Let's let, let, let me let me talk to you about something. Let me talk to you. We we down to number six. We down to number six. We done went through one through five. Number six, will the children get to keep their degrees if found guilty? Do you, they done already uh, said, said whether they're going to try to kick out the ones that are in school and whether they're going to try, they're definitely going to let the ones that are just admitted out. But even if you finish, you should, your degree you sh should not count and you should start over. Do you agree or disagree and why? I agree. I agree. They should, they, they should be kicked out 
and they should be criminally prosecuted because they know they didn't play they didn't play those sports. They know they didn't make the grades. Come on. They didn't make the grades. We don't get those we see we don't get those opportunities. And one thing I wanted to talk on, Tone, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh black celebrities locked out of this. I guarantee you none of those parents are black. Black celebrities, they they lost out on everything. They, we perceive them yeah. to be included, but they're excluded. Let's from talk them. about it. Let's it's, talk about it. Let me let me let me frame that for everybody, bro, bro. Look, there might be, there's about based on the Federal Reserve data, and I'm not guessing because I pulled the micro data with Matt Brunig, did an article on it. There might be 340,000 black families worth 1.2 million dollars with everything they have. So that means that you can have a house and an extra piece of property, have a pension with 200,000 in it and have $80,000 between your stocks, your little bit of stocks and, and some liquid cash and be in the top 350,000 black families. Understand half of those might be immigrants. Only half of those might be ADOS. Like we don't know the split, but it ain't all ADOS. Understand that we're talking about a scandal where the lowest parent paid 200,000 and the highest paid 6 million. Let me give one more key piece of data about this 340,000 black families. They're pretty much all boomer retirees, which means their kids are like 38 and 40 sending kids to college. So that what so that means there aren't a group of black people that are even playing through the side door. We already know we ain't in the back door. We're right. not putting up 3 3 million for a building. You can go to all these schools and look for the building with the black name on it. But, and I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about PWIs. I'm talking about the, the white institutions. So coming back to it, what you see is this whole scheme is a game that we can't play. But we got an aspiration problem in black America. Why? Because literally a bunch of y'all that are listening right now want your kids to go to Stanford Go to UCLA, but you don't have 40000 in the bank for them right now. I'm not talking about what you're going to have after the hair business take off. But what this game is saying is they don't not, they not only have fifty, dollars $100,000 in the bank right now for that kid, they also are willing to pay a, a million dollars right now to get that kid into the school. I don't think we understand what that means about that space in that school and what it means and what it occupies. That means when you're in that space, you're supposed to come from some wealth. That's why I got to get y'all reparations so y'all can be able to have some wealth. Give me your take on it, caller. Yeah, you're right, Tone. I mean, you're absolutely right. That's where we at, man. You know, we need we need reparations. We need it now. I mean, in the door, we're here. Like you say, all oh, we are here. You can't get no more. I mean, this scandal is an onion. And it's peeling, man. What about the banks? I mean, we can go on and on. I mean, high school level, prep school. I saw one article. They 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 they're targeting prep school. I mean, this goes. This, this is the deep. whole. This the this no. It's it's not just this. The whole life in the top top ten percent. Look, let's talk about it in data in terms of. I've shown y'all a chart that shows you the bottom ninety and the top point one. Um, and what it shows is that for the first time ever, we have the same level of wealth. Since the Depression, I'm sorry, not the first time ever. Since the Depression, it's the first time that both groups, the bottom 90 and the top 0.1, have the same amount of wealth. That's a very small amount of white families that have the same amount of wealth as the whole bottom 90 of America. Black America's in the bottom 50% of America, in the whole race almost, bar a few old families. Now, this is the thing. There's a third line of the 9.9. The 9.9 are these families. That's the families that are worth 1 million and 2 million and 3 million. Our best families are in the bottom of the 9.9. They're old and in the bottom of the 9.9. That group is fighting right now as they dip and don't have as much wealth. See, America did some weird stuff here where it calcified wealth, then it created a working, uh, 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 they call it a, a working rich. And then, they, and then they also created all these new millionaires. Understand this? Obama created a bunch of new millionaires. Let me talk about it. When Obama, yeah. in 2012, 
We have around four and a half, five million millionaires in America. By the time 2015 comes around, we have, I believe, 12 and a half, 13 million millionaires, all because of quantitative easing, boosting the stock market, creating a new white wealth class. There's no space for you at Harvard if you ain't got some money in a bank account for your kid. I'm just telling you, you send them there, they're they going to kick them out of the lunch place. I, I read an article where a lot of the poor kids, and your kid probably will be a poor kid, even if you make $100,000 a year. I make $100,000 a year, Tone. I'm not poor. Understand this. Your kid would be on the two meal lunch plan. And if they in there trying to eat a third time, look, we ain't got time. Don't be trying to stay over the break either. Fly home. Don't care what the ticket costs. We don't want you to stay over. These schools are not built if you don't have wealth for you to be there. Any last thing you want to say to the audience caller? Oh, uh, one other thing. I th thought this was an interesting point. I was reading it. Uh, the, the actress, not to point it on, uh, to make this whole issue about her, but this particular actress was filming uh, a Hallmark movie as she was flown back, uh, Becky. you know, to be to, to 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 see the FBI agent. So just just let that settle in, you know. Yeah, they gave her. They they we're 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 we're, we're coming to get you. We're gonna be there. <laughs> Thank we're you, gonna Tom. we're gonna be there at four o'clock. Um, is that okay? Is that a good time? Will you be shooting then? Understand, let me say one more thing about that point. Her daughter, when she got picked up, was on the yacht of a USC trustee, meaning the daughter that is the, the main recipient of all these gifts, let's call them what they are, of these cheating gifts, was on a USC trustee's yacht when her mama got picked up. Understand, with your kid that gets barely into USC and you didn't donate no money be on that yacht too, Nah, I don't think so. Your kid going to be struggling. Thank you so much, caller. Thank you, Tom. So, look, we through number six. We done got through ten of the takeaways. We coming through the ten takeaways, college cheating scandal. We did one, two, three, four, five, six. We on number seven. I want to take another caller, and he going to walk with me through number seven. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, uh, it's uh, Mike from Brooklyn. How's everything? What up, Mike? So look, Mike, you're going to walk with me through this number seven. You know, yes, the, go the government found out about this on accident. They was investigating They was investigating a, a white man on pump and dump, meaning like he was cheating on stocks. And he said, he said I'll, I'll give you the, the truth about it all if, if, you, if you let me out early. And they like, what are you talking about? Well, run the tape. I want to make sure you record this. I'm going to tell you the, the, the truth of whiteness in America. And they like, you really going to tell us? Because they know already. But once they got it on record, now they got to investigate it. They don't really want to investigate this. They know this goes down. Y'all think people knew this? So they only investigated this because they were forced to investigate this, in my view. So what I ask you is, what does it mean that the government only happenstance came on about this. They, they could find a corner boy on a small corner of, of Baltimore with, with a, uh, a, a, a drone, but they can't find this out going on. A million dollars of transfer, yeah. tax fraud. Yeah, it means, it means they're more reactionary than proactive. Come on. It's, 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 it's all a scam. Like, even when I went to school, I went to Boston University, and mm -hmm. when I got there, I fought to get there. I always wonder why many of my classmates were, like, mediocre, a vast majority of them seem to be unimaginative, privileged. And I'm ashamed to say at the time, I looked down on HBCUs. I didn't know much about them. I thought all you did when you went there was step and learn about black history. So I avoided it. But when I got there, you know, all my white friends, excuse me, my acquaintances, you know, when we would take exams, they would get extra time on tests. They would claim like they had anxiety. They would cheat. They would take Adderall. Do you know what Adderall is? It's a drug. I know that. It'll keep you up. Yeah. It, Adderall makes you focus. So if you're doing a really boring subject like physics, math, or something you don't want to do, you take Adderall, it makes you like an idiot savant. You just have this laser focus. You could read subject matter you would not ordinarily read for hours at a time. Come on. Now, it has terrible long-term effects. So later in life, it will affect your cognition and you'll have mental problems, but they use it to get an edge on you while they're in school. But like, you see all this. Some of my friends, they were doing, like, cocaine, all this other stuff. But when we graduated, they got the good job. When I looked at my LinkedIn now, I'm, like, a low-level executive. I'm basically a salesman, and they're all directors. They didn't get the no job. Let's call it what it is. I call it plugs and outlets. 
uh, basically, basically what they sold us education as is the outlet you get in there and then there's all these resources gonna open up it's only the plug so now you got a bunch of black people holding plugs the outlets network relationships family and everything else so they didn't get no job it just was time for their family to access that network so so don't no, feel bad about yourself no. bro bro no no but but there's a, there's a larger point to this this is actually dangerous for the country it's like this means it could be unqualified people all over the country in different could be. like could for example a couple months ago, I, I was Trump. reading, or I think it was last year, all these naval ships, when they were pulling into port, they kept crashing. And they were wondering, why are these state-of-the-art new ships with all this Aegis radar technology just crashing? They tried to blame it on China. They said, oh, maybe the Chinese hacked it. Then when they looked, they found out the captain all the way down, they were morons, and they didn't know how to navigate a ship. They just kept getting promoted. Yeah, it's, I agree. It's, it's like people, we ain't got, we ain't got to go, like, we ain't got to go that, far, that 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 deep. Donald Trump is president. Donald Trump, the recipient yep. of nothing more than privilege, access, and generational. He failed so many times, bankrupt, and then here's another gift of money. And I'm just saying to you, we got to really be honest about what this means for all of us. Thank you so much for calling in, calling. Yeah, of course, anytime. So look, man. We coming to number eight, and we gonna talk about the POC. AOC always talking about the POC. Ocasio Cortez always talking about the POC. She from Yorktown, but ran in New York. Look, I'm tired of this stuff where people are really like almost white. Basically, their life was almost white. When I say that, go look up Ocasio Cortez where she grew up. It's a white suburb. She didn't grow up in that district where she's from. I don't want to hear about I was a bartender. No, tell me where you went to high school and what where, where you grew up, the house you grew up in. It's all Yorktown. Yorktown is a it is a 45-minute train ride. You don't go there like every day to live and then it's not a transit like that. You lived in you lived, worked, and everything in Yorktown for years. It's, and maybe during like a, you would go visit family like once in the summer or three times in the summer. That don't make you from New York though. You from Yorktown. I feel like that's what's going on now when we get into the this whole scandal. We start dealing with the whole reality of what we see when we find when we find a Dominican family in the mix. The father making eight million dollars a year. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, he got his daughter and she doing the same thing the white people do to get into Georgetown. I think she used. Uh, she used a uh, water polo, I think. And then she gloated about it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did it. But she don't get to go to jail. She don't get treated like the young boy selling CDs, CDs that was 12. She like 18, that's six years of development. Not to mention her parents are very advanced professionals. So we might as well add three more years to that. You nine years in, in development ahead of this 12 year old boy. And you get treated like a child. Let's talk about it. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, I didn't, I didn't, my name is, uh, my name is Jahadu, but I didn't, I wasn't able to hear because I was trying to, uh, I was trying to call. I'll call reframe it for you. I'll reframe it for you. Daily Beast did an article on one of the families. They're Dominican. The father making $8 million a year. She doing the same thing as the white folks. They didn't, the father done lost his job as a result. But I'm really talking about like, we want to talk about this thing as though it's just white families. When this is about white privilege and the access to that and not being from ADOS life. And I think that we got to be honest about that. What do you think about the whole thing? And if you got other, you want to talk about something else, do that too. I mean, uh, again, like all, everything that happened to us in our past relates today. Like, uh -huh. like the, uh, like the, uh, the Rosewood massacre or what happened with, with Black Wall Street. Like every time that we try to build wealth or become a, become a part of, of America after they stole everything from us, all they did was shoot it down or find some way to shoot shoot us down. You know, all I'm not I'm not new to I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. You know, this this been this been going on. It's just people of wealth or white America. They didn't want to they didn't want to accept it because Look, they, they don't want they don't want to see it or they want they don't want to acknowledge it because they they want to keep things they want to keep things this way. They want to have things being unbalanced and find ways to get over on us. Like to me, all we are, all, all we are in America is just a whole bunch of house niggas and it's just one big plantation. 
Let me tell you something. A story broke today about uh, the, the husband of Aunt Becky. You know, they said that he a Trump supporter and he'd been about telling people that they need to uh, do better for themselves and pull themselves up by their bootstraps while he doing this. And understand this, like, dude, your whole family, this is about white families. I'm tired of this white male patriarchy and the, how much a black woman makes against a white male's dollar. No, we make the same nothing. Like we the only group probably when you add jail that the male men make less than the women. But it don't look, we black. ADOS. That's what matters. All this yeah, other definitely. stuff is games. Any last thing you want to say that, to the audience? Cause I gotta get to the last I just, point. I, I, I just wanna say that I'm I'm happy that this is going on and I'm very proud to be a part of this movement. And I, I just I just wish all our people like, all our people need to wake up. Like we, we need to we need to wake up, just like just like Spike Lee did, said and do the right thing. It, it's time to wake up. Like our, our generation right now, we so distracted by social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all of this stuff that's going on, that's keeping us from what what's real. Like if is this one of what we want to be remembered for? You got Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the Black Panther movement, and then you look at our generation. What we going to be remembered for looking at Instagram all day? Come on, and not man. Doing something about this? Well, we about to do something. Years. Hashtag ADOS. Yeah, we, 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 we are. We are. We are already doing it. But I'm saying for the masses that haven't woken up yet, or us, our family members that we bringing this to, and they trying to deny us. Oh, that ain't gonna never happen. That ain't gonna never happen. No, something needs to happen. Yeah, man. Thank and you so we, much. We need to. We need to take. We need to take action and not just not just speak on it. But All yeah, right. man, like yeah, something something needs to change, and that that's starting that's starting right now with ADR. Thank you so much for calling. Look, somebody in the chat asks, is, is that the same dude with the Mosimo clothes in Target? Yeah, he need to get them clothes up out of Target. Target need to cut that deal. That's the deal that they eat on. I don't care about Sephora and Hallmark. That's all penny money. Cut that Target deal. Target need to get his jeans up out of. That's that family will feel that. Look, this is where we at. We at a point where black folks, where America needs to get honest. Number nine, does this just apply to admissions or is this all a life? This is all a life. This is all a life. Where we're at is we're in a position where, where wealth, where blackness shuts you out. You don't have, you don't have a bar minimum. Like I said, 24,000, $2,000 a month, 24 in the bank account. So that they can have pocket money and you done paid the tuition. That's bar, that's like floor money. These people are paying a million dollars to get in. What you think they pay for their kids during the process? Or let alone how much do they give them after they leave school to be good as they transition into life? How much inheritance do they leave them? This is the space you push your kids into if they if you tell them if you get them access to UCLA, Stanford, Yale, Harvard. And I know we talk about HBCUs. But HBCUs aren't the answer if we don't have wealth. See, right now, HBCUs have more Pell Grant recipients. They have a lot of poverty because we don't have wealth. They work really well if we have wealth too, if we get reparations too, if we have transformation as well. That's where we at. And so look, I wanna, I wanna keep this discussion going. I'm gonna take one last caller Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Gigi. I'm in Detroit. Okay, Gigi, then you get the last question of the night. What will wealth calcification do to this whole system? And what I'm talking about is with the tax, this is all happening. All this is what's happening before Trump passed tax reform. All this is what's happening before wealth started really moving. It actually is during that process, but tax reform just got passed. If, if, if we mm -hmm. end up in a, right now where we're at is the top 10%. Which is the top 0.1 and the top 9.9 .9 together. Almost all white people have almost 80% of the wealth. I think we can move to a place where they got 85, 87%. How, I, I guess, I, I, do we understand? Do you think black folks understand? Do you think America understands what the consequence of that is? No, I don't think they understand that because, well, they, I think they do, but they just don't really care, <laughs> which is horrible. But in any case, we have to keep pushing forward. Um, you know, it's, it's just such a time for action. And I feel like we need to focus on getting these candidates to recognize what we're talking about. We've been able to push the, the narrative so far, um, you know, so we need to keep 
going with the grassroots movement. Yeah, man. Any la- anything you want to say up to the overall conversation? I'll give you a full minute to s- just say whatever you want to say. Okay, well, uh, this whole uh, college cheating scam, it really, really touched me because, you know, I spent my years at Dartmouth. I was fooled. I bought into the lie. I tried so hard. I was an, an amazing student and talent. I went through the front door, and when I got there, I thought I was going to meet some equal-minded people, and, and that's not what it was. And it was the worst four years of my life, but I'm just moving forward and, you know, trying to do the best for my family. I feel like everybody needs to jump on board. It's not anti-anybody. It's about moving forward and getting what was owed and having some way because, you know, like you mentioned, ADOS, the wealth about. and the tax. you talking about ADOS, right? That's going on. Yes. Yeah, okay. Just making sure that that was clear. Jump on board with ADOS because it's, a, it's an yeah. inclusive group. We ain't trying to cheat nobody. We're just trying to get made whole. And it might end up making it very different, though, because we ain't going to be at the bottom. Some, I don't know who go there. But, like, we just trying no, to get away home. But reparations is the way that we get from out of the bottom or else we're locked in. Like, you know, every all the statistics, all the data is showing that we are locked into this bottom cast. And if we don't push forward with action right now at a pivotal point, I don't know when we're going to have this opportunity again. Man, thank you so much for calling. It was a powerful call. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, look, this is the end of the show. This is Tone Talks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go to ToneTalks.org to subscribe and donate. Again, we're going to have the ADOS conference in Louisville, October 4th and 5th. Please, please, we sold out the main area. A thousand, we're going to have a 1,000 people in there. It's going to be fire. We're going to get a speech that you, we coming. We coming with that. What, what the conclusion of what Dr. King demanded. We got reparations table. All the candidates is talking. Read the Vox.com article. Great piece by, I believe, P.R. Lockhart. She interviewed us, and, you know, we just talked about it. It, it, It's very thorough about what the candidates are and are. Nobody really is talking right about reparations. They better get the numbers right. We'll talk about what we're going to do if they don't. But this is Tone Toss. Please come back next week, Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be having the discussion. Ten takeaways on the college cheating scandal. Share the video. We're going to have it. Thank you.